Human family, thank you for tuning in. I'm Keenan White, and I'll be sharing stories, dialogues, and methodologies for leading a conscious, abundant life. To me, luminous is a word that connects us to our vital life force energy and soul essence. Your bioluminosity is a barometer for health, a gauge for abundance, true prosperity, and a luminous way of life. In this podcast, I hope you find a more effortless way of tuning into the wisdom of your body, soul, and spirit. We'll explore the many faces of medicine, creativity, and self-mastery as it evolves and spans into esoteric and ancient wisdom and modern paradigm shifts in consciousness. In this episode, we'll be bridging efforts into a collaboration called The Power of Heart Presence, a live and recorded broadcast, whereby Elena Radford and I, Keenan White, share empowering perspectives in times of change. We offer wisdom that supports you to cultivate true abundance, align with purpose, and create a better future by shifting the energy of the present. During our broadcast, you're invited to call in for the support you need to move beyond limitations and make greater choices for your life path. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being with us today. And I just want to make sure that before we start the show, make sure to drink a little water because we, we process energy while we're doing uh, this um, this call, this this channeling session. So I'm going to welcome Kina. How are you doing, sweetie? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Elena? Good. So nice to have you on good. the show. How was your yeah, week? Yeah, so good to be here with you. Oh, this week's been okay. beautiful. Yeah, it's been actually really restful. Yeah, I've been feeling oh, a lot wonderful. more... Yeah, just a little more relaxed and feeling like my nervous system is adjusting to a lot of the uh, higher frequencies coming into the the earth. And yeah, it just feels like we're really moving through a lot energetically, collectively. And I feel like I'm resting and relaxing a little bit more to myself. That feels really good. Actually, and how are you? How's your good. week? <laughs> it's very similar to your experience. In my situation, when I'm clearing something because I'm preparing for what's coming, um, something breaks down, so I need to repair it. Like, um, or, or another thing, another way how is the feeling of cleaning the house. I have this urge of cleaning and cleaning and cleaning because I can sense something is moving in and something has to get out. So that's the way how I manifest my behavior mm. into. Um, into what's going on. So we we have a caller nice. already. So I think what we what the light being is saying is that we're going to integrate what um the teaching of the class today while we're coaching or helping the caller that we have in line. All right, Han? So let's go ahead and invite okay. the caller. Sure. Yeah, the caller ending in four one will bring on. Elena, how are you? I called last week, but I was driving. Oh, so am I the yes. am I the only one here today? Yes, you are the only. You're one the only one here part, today. So. Yep. Right. <laughs> wow! You know, I was so looking forward to calling in again, and I, I went back and I looked at your email because I could re- really use help opening up the heart space, heart chakra. I retired July 22nd, and on the 24th was jumping on a trampoline and um, messed up T4 and all that sort of stuff. But coincidentally, um, I'm learning that that heart chakra space is all tied and needs to be opened up. So any help that you can send my way is really appreciated. Sure. So let's... Uh, I'm going to let Keenan to look into your space first, and then I'll, I'll look into your space. And what are you getting from her female energy? What's her conversation with herself? Hmm. Just feeling into this a little bit. So while you yeah, you how, are how's the picture? Of, how's the picture of self love? The picture of self love is has to do with the 
what I'm looking for is uh, go ahead and drink some water. We're going to need some water to be able to shift some of the energies that we're seeing. So I just want to clarify this for the uh, for everybody that when we observe in something, we have the ability to change the outcome or the behavior of something. That's how powerful we are as beings. And going back to what you're saying, and what I'm seeing in her heart, what I'm seeing in self-love is that for the longest time, she has been, like most of us, in a reality where we think more about the other people, we care more about other people, the personal needs, and then we forget of what's important to us. Is that making sense to you, Sudi? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, can, how can you relate to that? How was your life? Were you always taking care of others? Are you asking me or Karen? Mm-hmm. Yeah. To you, sweetheart. Um, absolutely. You know, my mother died when I was young, and I was responsible for four younger kids, and um, that carried pretty much through. My physical therapist last night said that this is some work that I need to do, you know, and I need to, um, uh, like, you know, get rid of any idea that I can control this, that just I need to listen and I need to just be and um, let it happen. Mm -hmm. So there's two things I'm getting here. The first one is, let me explain this because it's a different dynamic. It's kind of hard to understand it because we don't uh, we don't work in that way here. But the female energy, we all have a female energy because we're creators. So to me, every time that we're creating something, we're using our female energy. So when I look into your female energy, it's just not having permission to create. And so sometimes your body creates situations. So you can pay attention to your body and what you need to be able to flow in the energy of creator. For instance, let's say you're somebody who likes to bake bread. You you like bread so much. But the creator part of you is to think what are the ingredients that you get to buy to be able to make the bread and the bread. So let's say you will need flour, butter, or the different ingredients that you need. So your process of creating your immune system, your body, your fields, when they're creating, they're organizing things. They're always putting things together. In the ancient times, through my people, when they will see the movement of the energy, then that was called the female energy because it's always look into the ways how to bring the, um, the, the creation, all right? So the male part of you is the direction. It's like now that you have your cake ready or your bread ready, how are you going to eat it? How, when are you going to eat it? It has to do a lot with the concept of time. Well, the female energy has to do with the concept of creation and space, and the direction, which is the male energy, has to know when that gets to be eaten, when you're going to eat your bread, and then the creative energy will be, oh, I'm going to enjoy the bread. So they're always co-creating together. But if for some reason the outside world, like in your situation, have to take the role of a female, of a male energy, which means always providing and giving and giving and giving without receiving, then your female energy, when I see it floating in your body, it's not taking it to a higher connection of enjoying life. So because we communicate, our inside energy communicates with the outside energy, it's very possible that things happen in your life to stop the enjoyment of life. Is that making sense? Absolutely. So in your language, yeah. how would you translate that? Can I, do you mind helping her a little? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I guess just feel like adding the part about, you know, one of the questions I was wanting to ask was, you know, what is the 
what is the thing that you could bring yourself into the the, the most easily and effortlessly that that feels just really good it feels really pleasurable it feels um enjoyable and what are the activities that that um you might be able to engage with more often that that bring you into that energy of like even just in the joy of thinking about the ingredients you know you you, you could bake a cake to get it done and you know want the end result or you could bake it with this enjoyment of each ingredient at each moment that you get to smell the aromas and taste everything and uh yeah so it just feels like that yeah that, that's the image i guess i'd like to bring in thank you so much thank you for bringing that image because it's so interesting that when somebody is blocked it's just the male energy of your body um stopping the female part of you that's creating that's why some people can be so smart and have the ability to make money. But if the male energy inside of it is just shutting down and punishment the female energy, the money is not going to flow. So, like in my personal experience, when I see my frequency of female, female energy dancing, one of the things where the male energy gets contaminated is when there's an idea in my mind that I'm going to be rejected and nobody wants me. I see that I don't have as many contaminations when it comes to me moving forward in my creative idea, but the moment that I feel that somebody is going to reject me or doesn't love me, that little part of my brain starts shifting the movement of the male energy and the male energy stops creating. Uh, the male energy stops finding the direction, and it becomes like the... Um, and it targets the female energy, and it blocks the female energy. So in your situation, what the light is, if that's okay with you, want to do is to start releasing the idea that you are responsible for everybody else, even though you are in the space where you need help. So we need to break the cycle so your body can start healing, your body can start, like your therapist said, let it go, so you... The, because the healing energy is in the female energy. Your female energy, that tiny little piece of your atom that is in charge of healing you, is having too much anxiety and stress because it's not finding the connection in time to make it happen because of the damage of this male energy or the contamination that the male energy that your body is going through. I don't know if that's making sense, Anne. It does make sense. And the light beams can you... have at it. Like, you okay. know, yes, okay. the light beams, like, go for it. Okay, so let's see what they're going to do. Go ahead and drink some water. And Kim's going to help me with this, too. So the first thing is the awareness that you don't want to be doing that anymore. You don't want to be sabotaging yourself because you feel responsible for others. I okay? absolutely so don't. don't. I release that. Mm-hmm. Okay, hon. Okay, it's already shifting. And it's already bringing an opening. It's like a bright light that says, what about me? I need to learn to take care of myself. I need to be strong again. I need to be able to do things I want to do. It is my right of a creator. So the female part of you, which is the energy in your body, is claiming its power to create healing or create possibilities. Whatever she feels comfortable at is that okay to see my value. It's okay to see to have what I want. It's okay to think what I want to think. It's okay to speak my truth. All those are female energies that we have inside of ourselves. And that's what they are reintegrating back into your energy or opening up or helping you to remember because you want to enjoy life and it's your right to enjoy life. Okay, there it is. There's the block. It's coming out. All right. Kenan, how what are you seeing while I'm working here in this? Yeah, it just seems like a, a simple you know, sometimes we think it's so complicated and um 
it can be so so simple um, to move into the the life that we want to move into, and you know, uh, release some of these blocks. And I, I just get reminded of that in the times that we're blocked or we're not feeling like things are going our way, then usually somewhere along the way, our imagination has been captured. It's like uh, become mm-hmm. a prisoner. And to release that imagination is, is really a big part of, I think, our, our ability to create. And so, yeah, it's something simple like using the words, I give permission to, I give myself permission to, and just fill in the blank and, and use the imagination to just dream up a little bit. You know, what are, what are you wanting more of in your life? You know, um, mm-hmm. what are you wanting to bring in? And just allow allow your, your imagination to, to bring in something new. You might feel yeah. that. If, if you're feeling like that you, you're not coming up with anything quite yet, then um, you might just need to be present with uh, what's happening in your body a little longer. You know, just noticing, like, if you do feel blocked, like, where is that? And... You know, bringing some awareness into the body. Oh, okay, it's here. And, and you know, I, I think about this oftentimes as um, taking ourselves out of the mind and the intellect and into the, the language of the body, because it really does have a story. And it's it's we're learning learning the language of the body helps us understand really what our 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 higher self wants to communicate. And it's a different language. It's not really words necessarily. Sometimes they can come in. Sometimes visuals can. Uh, but it's sensations. It's feelings. It's colors, light, and geometry. And so you could just be with the, some of those geometries, those sensations, those feelings. Not necessarily making, you know, any interpretation of them, but just observing what's there. And a lot of times I'll ask a question, you know, what, what's really here? Is there a message here that I might need to receive? And sometimes the message that is, is being received um, is a sensation. And I, I simply just needed to feel a certain thing maybe I haven't been feeling. And once that feeling has been felt, then usually there's a clarity that comes in. All, you know, And part of that clarity is a restoration of that imagination. Yes, and... The imagination is the female energy. It's one of the attributes of the female energy that you have inside of you. Um, let me share a story. There was this little dog that his imagination would tell him that he was the best good-looking dog ever. And um, because his imagination allowed him to feel in that way, then he became that. He... Um, Everybody that will connect to that imagination will see him as the cutest dog ever. So um, that's the power of our imagination. And like Keenan said, it's so important to develop that and observe that. And and you can. And I have seen people, and there are masters that they train their body to heal in that way using that imagination that the body is going to be healed. And I know Kina has more examples of that. Would you like to share a little more of that, Kina? Uh, an example about healing the body with the imagination? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, let me see if something wants to come in. Um, yeah, so, uh, okay, so one time I, I had a friend who, she had this uh, really interesting um, you know, almost kind of like, wow, like what happened to your hand, you know? And it was like this, um, you know, like a cut. And she said, well, yeah, I, I picked up a spatula off the ground and it was, there's something sharp. And, you know, she got cut essentially. And we were playing, she's a, a massage therapist and a body worker and, and so am I. So we were really having this open dialogue about how is some of this healing taking place and, and might we be open to the miraculous quality that, that can emerge sometimes 
in ways we we can't quite understand in our minds. So, you know, I held her hand for a moment, and she just invited me into, you know, seeing what was there. And so I just began imagining this uh, house. And and it's funny how imagination works, too. Sometimes we don't have to really force it. It it just, it is a flow. Like, it just kind of happens. Things show up. Images start to show up. Um, So what was showing up for me in my imagination was this this house. And I ended up... um, seeing myself in her house, <laughs> opening the door, and there was a guy there. And I I just remember my heart beating really fast, and he wasn't welcome. It was like, okay, this guy needs to not be here. And so I was imagining myself, you know, like kicking him out, you know. And I closed the door, and... You know, at the, at this point, like right when that happened, she started crying, and um, I could feel all this shame, and it was like you, you know me maybe seeing an aspect of her, but this shame started to come in, and I could sort of feel what was there happening, like you know maybe there were some men coming into her life, and she just began to um, share the story about yes, that you know I've been letting some men into my world that haven't been the most healthy. And at the end of the uh, the time together, the the um, you know it's just we we talked for maybe another ten minutes. She was processing some grief, and then we looked down at her hand, kind of almost at an afterthought. And it was like night and day, like it you know she had had a band aid on her hand, and there was you know triple antibiotic ointment on there for three days or something, and it was like this. You know, it moved from this gruesome-looking cut to something that looked, like, relatively healed within 15 minutes. It was, like, one of the most more, more miraculous moments. But it's, you know, what I was learning from them is that, you know, these things that show up in us physically, sometimes it can be something small, you know, like maybe we grab a kitchen utensil and, you know, there's a cut there. But it's it's being drawn into our world energetically as this mirror, for what we're holding and as soon as we can recognize the the pattern that's being played there and bring the imagination into creating something new right creating this new safe space for her which is like this house where she doesn't have to deal with that so my imagination was you know creating this safe uh, space for her to get to feel and so in, in in the creation of that she could feel the contrast of oh my god i i that's actually what I desire. And now I can feel, I can feel this and I don't have to keep doing what I've been doing in this whole pattern. Thank you for sharing that. How are you feeling now? Yeah, happy to share. Thank you. Another thing that I wanted to share with you is I use my imagination, my female energy a lot to be able to um, create relationships with others as well. If you come from the space of love and you perceive whatever situation is with somebody else, then the outcome of the communication will be to a higher standard that if you're coming from anger, frustration, or insecurities. So, for instance, let's say I am for some reason I'm angry with someone, what I do is I, I bless that person. I, I My observation, my imagination, my female energy will focus into sending unconditional love to that person. Regardless for what it is, I send that frequency to the heart of that person and I let that energy to create a new reality or imagination or observation that can benefit me and it can benefit the other person. And then, um, because this is done energetically, I don't always know what's going to happen. But inside of my heart, I know it's going to be a much better income outcome than having somebody that I'm angry, punishing, or judging. Because I understand now, with all the work that I've done through these years, that that, if we're not in the energies of love, we can become the trigger of some kind of illness or 
um, something for somebody that eventually we're going to get back. So, yeah, there is conflict, there is misunderstanding, but if you come from the space of envisioning and sending love and blessings to the other person, that person will be perceptive to that, and eventually you will find a way out. And, yeah, and granted, there's people that it takes quite a little longer, but at the end, it'll be the body managing the the outcome instead of the mind with the contaminations of insecurity or other things. I hope that's helping, hon. It does. So this all makes complete? so much sense. Good, good. And I, the last thing is make sure to think of water for the next couple hours because you're already in the process of healing. It's a process, so this is going to help you a lot. All right? Yeah, I think we... Is there anything we, that you um, would like to share? Yeah, I'd love to hear I, I, what you, what, how yeah. you're feeling at this point. Well, I'm I'm feeling like um, this is right on and and exactly what I need for this moment. And I also feel like I'm on like the edge of tears. You know, like I don't really they're they're not really there, so I can't say this is this is the why. But they I feel like tears are coming to the surface, which seems mm. to be a good thing. You know, like if I can figure out, you know, or, or just let it happen, and then, you know, there's there's probably some insight there that's also going to move me through. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. I I, I want to add in there too that I think you know I had some tears come up the other day, and I was just you know my mind immediately wanted to say, oh, like, well, what is this from? And I was like, I have I literally just said I have no idea, <laughs> and then I just allowed myself to feel more of it and not know. And I think just be allowing yourself to be in that not knowing is actually inviting more of that feminine energy in. And in your case, if that's something you're, you're wanting to cultivate more of that, you know, that would be uh, um, my invitation for you is to, is to actually allow yourself to be in that not knowing and be in the feeling, just the sheer raw feeling. And once the feeling is felt, you're going to know exactly what was there. Um, so it, I kind of almost think like ladies first, like <laughs> it takes us to feel something before we, we can know what's really there. Um, so I hope That's that helps in, in your process. Yeah. Yeah. And this imagination, you know, and female energy is right on because, um, you know, the, the job that I've done for the last so many years has been so intensive I, I don't even know how to imagine anymore. So I'm looking forward to finding that part of myself again. That's great. Yeah, well, how fun, like how enjoyable it can be, too, to just to, to go in and find that. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for you. Thank you. Thank you both. You're welcome. Very welcome. Thank you for coming to the call. So, Kenan, what is next? I'm still working in the energy of balancing, so I'll let you step into what your heart telling you. Yeah, so, I mean, we've only got the one caller, too, so, I mean, if, if something um, okay. else wanted to come through, we could always do that. But, yeah, we could just maybe have a, a little bit of a conversation about what what else is here, here for us today. Um, I've been feeling lately that the, the, uh, the really feeling like what is it really like to trust and, and and it's you know and what is it what does that even mean is it is it that I'm trusting life is it that I'm trusting myself is it that I'm trusting other people maybe it's a combination of all those things and if I'm trusting life like most likely I'm actually trusting myself and if I'm not trusting other people then maybe I'm not trusting myself maybe I'm not trusting life and Maybe this will tie in nicely too to to kind of what we've been talking about as well as you know sometimes we want to create a change, and we know the change is going to happen, but how do we like how do we go into the energy of that and just trust that something completely new as a feeling as an experience in life is is going to you know show up because everything that's been evidence in my life, you know, and this would be the story probably of the ego is like, hey, everything that that's happened has looked like this. You know, how how am I how is like this new thing gonna show up? Because I almost don't even know what that is like. Um Exactly. So Elena, I don't I, 
if you have something to say around how you work with the NACF Trust, I'd, I would love, love to hear. And I've got some things too, but yeah, yeah. maybe we'll bring in your perspective. Sure. It's like last week, right? There was so much going on in my life. And I think it's a process. You don't know what to do because it's coming in the future and you don't know what's coming in the future and you don't know how it's going to look like. And if you don't know how it's going to look like, how can you make a choice in something that you don't know or how it looks like or doesn't look like, right? So um, it's like moving to an apartment. I mean, you want to move into an apartment, but if you don't know how the apartment looks like, how can you determine if that's what you want or if that's not what you want, right? Assuming that you're not being exactly. allowed to see the apartment first before you sign the lease. So that's the uncertainty of the future. So what I do, and this is, I, I learned from an amazing teacher, that if I align, it's like we go to school, when we go to school and we're, like when we're really young, we are learning to see life through the experiences of what you're having in school. And so it's very limiting, bullying, maybe being hungry at lunch because you're eating something that you don't like, or maybe uh, uh, maybe you're unhappy because you want to be with your mom and mom is not available, or maybe you miss your dad. So many uncertainties that are happening. But one way or another, the school system is the eye of what's taking you into the real world eventually, right? But there's another school, and this school is quite interesting. It is aligning with everything else that is outside of that platform of what you learn in your school, which is plants, water, animals, um, the environment, rain, wind, um, everything that is there is like a composition, it's like an orchestra, it's like a, like a song that's being played together. And if we learn to connect through our feelings with this, knowing that you have a part in the role of the universe, which is a bigger picture than your experience in high school or kindergarten, then, and you start co-creating with those energies, then that will give you most of the time that determination that you're playing a lyric, you're playing a specific tone, or you're creating a specific movement that is aligned with the universe. And when you feel that, the confidence and the trust comes back eventually into your space because now you know you're creating as a team that you play an important role as much as a tree can play in front or like a rock or anything. It can be chemical elements, you know, so many things. It can be a seaweed from the ocean or it can be fish from the ocean. Whatever it is energetically composing something together, creating a future with that is more appealing and there's a sense of trust that I trust that they want the best for me and I want the best for them. So we're co-creating. When I'm in that energy, and a, a beautiful teacher taught me that when I'm in that energy, then I become spiritual. That's spirituality. Creating to that level that you connect to the spirit of every creation. I don't know if that's answering your question, Han. I, I think it's so beautiful the way you put it, yeah. Because, yeah, I, I feel like one of the messages that's been coming through for me, too, is that... Uh, you know, and this happened actually when I was just staring out into this valley of trees and <laughs> it was like so beautiful and I was standing there for quite a while and I just got this message like we like we are here to support you. <laughs> it's kind of just laughable, like funny that are these trees talking to me, I don't know, but whether it's my imagination or actually the trees that I'm feeling this level of support, you know, and that's almost the energy of a tree. You know, they're 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 just rooting mm -hmm. into the earth and receiving, you know, nourishment and creating this deeper structure of support that's allowing them to be there in this, you know, all this kind of beauty 
in awe of the the magic of how things are just taken care of. You know, we're um, we I think we sometimes we get you know we get lost in with our shoes and we get lost with our um, AC apartments and and our cars and these things tend to separate us from this direct connection to nature. You know, where we can be barefoot and be out and feel yeah. actually some of the dirt and feel the sand and um, you know some, I think even somebody had mentioned to me maybe it was a something I watched online but it was like oh it was actually a, a preview of the show on Gaia and there was a, some talk about the power of uh, the earth as this kind of like um, it was very scientific it was this you know scientists explaining how the, the sun is shooting these light beams and sound into the earth and just connecting <laughs> with the earth on our barefoot feet for for one minute, one to two minutes allows mm-hmm. us to receive these cosmic energies that support us in a whole entirely different way. And um, I just thought that was mm-hmm. so fascinating to look at on, on a scientific level. But I really love what you're saying, Elena, because it it just feels that like when in doubt, nature has just such an uncanny ability to allow us to come back into this flow and alignment where things just happen so easily and effortlessly. And if you look at the animals that mm-hmm. land on a tree branch, for example, you know, they, they take these pauses. They really like yeah. pause. And we tend not to, you know, we tend to, even if we're in line, we might pull out our phone. <laughs> You get to the red light, you yeah. pull out your phone, who's calling me? And it's like, what happens if we just, you know, just take 15 seconds, I mean, at the very least, just to just to really relax mm. into what's happening? Because, like, what what stood out to me was what you said, Elena, was this or, the word orchestra. I mean, actually, there's this orchestra happening. And when we start to attune to that yeah. and see more of that and realize we actually are that, we're not really separate and anything we no. want to move into, it's already happening. It is. And let me just give you an example. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, you want to say something else? I just kind of want to say something no, to complement yeah. what you're saying. So um, I, you come to the class that I'm teaching that's every two weeks for channeling, right? And I remember yeah. we need once every two weeks. And so my assignment when we're channeling, because everybody gets the assignment, to connect as an observer and be part of this, the whole unity of the orchestra, right? So the light being said to me, your assignment is to find an apartment for your son, which is actually, first it was going to be an apartment for me and my son that we're going to share. But then I couldn't find anything, and I live in Salt Lake City downtown, and it's hard as it is to find a place here. But I know when you're creating with the universe, and it's meant to be, things will happen. So it was over a month already, and first it was the realization that it was not for his higher self, my higher self, to live together. But then I took into the assignment on finding a place for him while he was on a trip to Germany. So and I could not find anything. And literally, it became like a part-time job, like going into these different sites and trying to find something. And finally, I tap into my heart and I say, what is going on? Things should not be this hard, right? And I tap into my heart and I was meditating, like you were saying, you know, I take those one minute or two minutes and I go into my heart and connect to nature. And I ask, and I heard this voice, this deep knowledge, this intuition, this imagination of female energy inside of me that I said, you're looking a place for your son through your eyes, but what about looking for a place for him through his eyes? And I'm talking about driving around for almost like a month looking for a place for him. In my, <laughs> in my imagination came the place for him. I got into the car, I went to the place, and yeah, to the energy, I call him it's because of some openings that I have there. And when we went there, that was exactly what he wanted. <laughs> so it was beautiful hmm. because it made me very humble. That it's humble in the sense that something is there that is bigger than us. And number two, because I want to be coachable through that possibility to create what I want to create in my life. So that 
was my experience into the intelligence that is there through plants, animals, fox, and and how I want to tap more into that because, I mean, a month compared to literally in half an hour, I found a place. So, time mm-hmm. management, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think it's. I, I think what I'm like feeling into, and we do have another caller here, so I'd love to bring them on in a second. But <laughs> yeah, I, mm-hmm. I feel into that really uh, amazing kind of like magic that we sometimes say around, um, you know, when time speeds up and things happen way sooner than what we'd imagine them to be. It's that alignment, and I think about that alignment is really just that, you know, that it's alignment with nature. It's what else would it be? It's it's when we you know, in our individual self merges, you know, there's a union that happens with uh, these other layers of our being. And, mm-hmm. yeah, it's like you're harnessing the intelligence of, the, of nature. And it's an interesting space where, um, you know, I think this word is, is coming up because it's part of trust that we mm-hmm. surrender to that. And it's not like giving up all faculties, right? I'm just like, oh, I just give up and I surrender everything. It's more like I think about it as surrendering to, uh, like, what's already there, you know, um, and that we we may be, you know, creating a story or a narrative or, you know, taking in all this energy from our eyes. I mean, just having our eyes open and um, I mean, we take in so much information through just our visual. And so just closing the eyes sometimes can bring in such a other dimension to existence where you can really notice more, listen more more deeply mm-hmm. to what's there. So anyways, we, lo- we did lose our caller there. Um, she Somebody came on and then popped back off. But, yeah, we could bring on uh, our other existing caller and see if she has any other questions. Do you, do you have any other directions, Elena? Anything you'd like to say? No. I, I think I, I, I feel very complete. I feel, oh, yeah, this is what the lighting is showing with me right now. An orchestra, right? It's like the, the director of the orchestra. And he knows what's out of tune, right? So in my situation with the apartment, he knew what was out of tune. It was not going to work for me. It was not going to work for my son. And it was not going to live together because he needed to have his own experience. I need to have my own experience. But see, the universe already knew. And on top of it, they already knew what was going to be the place for him through his eyes of experience, through his feelings. So our feelings are the window in the tuning to be in the orchestra of the universe. Yeah, that's what I Yeah, it's such, a, it's such a nice thing to bring in because I think at the very beginning, you know, you know we were talking about this opening into the female energy and more of that flow and the creation. And, yeah, I mean, if there's a, a word that stands out there, it really is the feeling. Um, so it's, it's it's almost like our medium into the feminine power of, like, uh, some call it Shakti or just I think about it as life force energy, the, 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 the prana, the energy that's moving through us is this kind of feminine force. Um, and then I think mm-hmm. about the male as this awareness. Um, so it's like we could be holding an awareness and be being present to something. Um, but when we when we do that and then we bring the feeling into it, then there's this kind of union that happens where we're almost kind of like, you know, harnessing both both energies. There you go. So, That's when you're balancing yeah. the female and male energy. Yeah. 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 So maybe let's uh, maybe bring on caller ending in four one six. If there's any comments, questions, if, if not, that's totally cool too. Uh, but I'll just see if anything else is there. You're on. Well, I was I was listening, and when you were talking about looking out at the trees, and then you said, you know, something about, um, you know, what do we lose like through our shoes and stuff. <laughs> I was waiting for you to finish, and then I was going to say, you know, you have to take your shoes off because. You know, there's such a connection to the earth and, you know, even from a healing standpoint, like you're the, the positive and the negative electrons, you know, I can't remember which one is which, like one is you and one is the earth, but they balance each other out. And in that balance, you eliminate inflammation. 
just to take what you were saying a step farther into the physical into the physical body i mean it's it's incredible the healing Thanks that can take place that. yeah it's, you know I'm and sure if, if i would have you know, had the same thing if i had shoes on <laughs> yeah well and you know like you're not grounded if you're in your house or on asphalt or anything like that you know it's grass and rocks and cement and you know like earth earth materials but um, it, it's incredible, particularly wet. Like if you can wet the cement or wet the grass or wet the whatever. And that's why, you know, like people will go to the beach and, you know, they're like, oh, it's so relaxing. But it's that mm-hmm. grounding feeling that they're not connecting to that uh, feeling of, you know, extreme relaxation or whatever or peace or, you know, whatever it is that's filling them up being at the ocean. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing yeah, that. I, I totally want to do that. Go ahead, yeah, I just want to acknowledge that I feel like you're you're really in that feminine flow. It's like really your imagination is active. And um, I just find it interesting, too, how it's easier to trust people. You know, like in this world, it's like, what's what? And, you know, what's coming in? Who do I trust? And that, when we're all feeling, it's just so much easier to, to trust life, to trust each other, trust ourselves. And so I don't acknowledge that it, you seem like you're just like moving right into that. So awesome. Well, thank you. Um, thank you. You know, to what Elena was saying when she was talking about, you know, like not knowing what the future holds, you know, just entering into, like literally just entering into this retirement phase. I do think there's a piece of me, um, and hopefully, you know, the light beams are addressing it and this whole release and all of that, that is – you know, this fear of the unknown, and rather than being paralyzed in it, it would be wonderful to just be free and reveling in it, if that makes sense. Yeah, I don't think, yeah. I feel like that you put your finger on it. <laughs> like maybe that's yeah. what the tears yeah. were, you know? <laughs> like, you know, who knows? Yeah, you, those, that can even be so enjoyable, you know. Oh, how how like how nice is it to, to lose any sense of what I know right now, and just be with this and, and enjoy, you know. Even if I'm, even if there is sadness, and see I think what that's a, a really yeah. I think that's where like there's a the, a subtle sense of mastery comes in to our experience that can happen so quickly, where we don't have to jump through a million hoops and figure all these things out, but we can actually literally just be present with what's here and embrace it fully and, and experience the full spectrum of what we're here for, which is all of it. It's happiness, it's sadness, it's having direction, it's having no direction. Yeah. Can the light beams give me assistance in maintaining that? It is possible to maintain it. One of the things is to help because it's it's your choice, right? So when you process ideas in your mind, you you you, you kind of have to be aware of what you're processing in your brain and choose not to process that. Like if you feel insecure, insecure, you can say, I don't want to feel insecure, but you invite that thought, that idea to be removed out of your system, and then you... Uh, you start integrating. You maintain that by loving yourself and by choosing what you want to process in your brain. There you go. Because it's it's like, right there. It's, mm-hmm. it's back to loving yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Back to the feeling. Maybe a question yeah. that might help you is, at the moment that I'm not feeling, how might I return to that? Like how quickly can I come back? Without even, you know, figuring it, because there it, it could be a tendency to, like, whoa, how did I lose that sense of what I feel, or how, what, how, how did I get into the mind? And then that's just another question for the mind to entertain itself, <laughs> you know. You know, the question might be just, like, how do I get right back into that? And I think, I think you know, those those things that you decide on, like, that bring you into that heart space, that bring you into that feeling, you know, that you love. You know, like the things we love, we value the most, really bring us into that. And so you might ask, you know, like, what is it that I truly value and, and how can I bring more of that into my life? Because in that space, you'll you'll find that being in the feeling of it is so effortless. 
and the more that the mind kind of like releases control with needing to know, needing to be the one that's in the driver's seat, then the more that the mind is like in its rightful place, like being more of a servant to the master, which to me is the heart, you know, it's the mm-hmm. heart is like this portal portal into our um, our higher frequencies. It's this union place of the earth and the heavens. It's, um, and the feelings are, I think for that reason, a, a gateway into these, you know, these other like, kind of magical creation, so to speak, like the, our creative power. Right. Just remembering Beautiful. that. Beautiful. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I feel pretty complete, Alina. Do you feel like sharing anything? And, and um, thanks for calling in today. It's been really fun chatting today. Yeah, this has been oh. great. Thank you, hon. I'm feeling complete. I think we're done for today. Well, thank you both thank you, very everyone. much. Have a wonderful day. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. You as well. And just okay, make bye. sure. Bye. I will drink water. Just make sure for water. all. Yes. Water. I'm drinking okay. water that's um, terahertz water. Amazing. That's good water. <laughs> I heard it. Yeah. <laughs> you have a good day, both of you guys. <laughs> Love you. Bye. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you.